In a business context, one way to classify people is to divide them between those who like to run businesses and those who like to do deals. I call them operators and traders. That's with a D. We were in the middle of a complex negotiation to buy the division of a large company. At one point, I called the board member who was supporting me on my side and left a message that said, if I have to take another call from that or I'm going to strangle him. Now, he helpfully played that at our next board meeting, which got a lot of laughs. But it revealed a natural tension between two very different styles. I'm a business operator, and the banker that I was dealing with on the other side was a trader. As managers, when we're assigning people to tasks, we want to make sure that we're not putting square pegs into round holes. What we see in leadership is people rise to those roles because they're either really good at running businesses or they're really good at doing deals. So you don't have your normal distribution curve with kind of a bump in the middle. What you have is more of a smile with clusters at either end. So it's particularly helpful if you're going to be a leader in a business to both understand where you're coming from and where the people you're dealing with are coming from. Are they operators or are they traders? Operators enjoy taming complexity. You'll see them taking complex processes and streamlining them. They enjoy managing teams of people and getting them pointed in the same direction. And they generally play a long game. They're thinking anywhere from a year to 20 years out. And where do you find them in a business? They're in operations and general management, product management, product development and engineering, even accounting. They're across the business making sure that everything runs efficiently. Traders, on the other hand, love the game. You'll find them talking about deal psychology, basically how to psych out the other side. They love the arm wrestling over terms in the deal, and they tend to be transactional by nature. So they do a deal, they get a win, they move on. You find them in sales, consulting, and banking. Now, I don't mean to imply that this is an either or proposition. All businesses need both types. It's really about finding a balance between the people who do your deals and the people who run your operations. Take the deal that I mentioned at the top of the video. In that case, the banker was doing the right thing for his client by making sure they got the best deal possible. While I, the operator on our side, was really focused on how this was gonna work once the paper was signed. How do you know who's what? Operators enjoy solving complex puzzles. You'll see them organizing teams kind of organically, either during work or after work. And they're the people who can sustain focus on a problem over a long period of time. Traders, on the other hand, enjoy the chase, whether it's in romance or in business. They love to debate other people, and they like lots and lots of variety in their life. And they're transactional, so you'll see them set a goal, achieve the goal, and move on. So how does this work in practice? Well, let's start with negotiation. Now, the first thing you gotta do is understand who you're dealing with on the other side. Go to a meal, take some time in meetings to ask questions and figure out if they're an operator or a trader. When you're down to the brass tacks, it's really gonna be helpful. For example, an operator may be more focused on maintaining a brand name in the market, whereas a trader may want a few extra dollars. You can tune your offer based on your understanding of who you're dealing with. Now, when you're looking at your own team, it's very important that you have balance because you want both a fair deal and a workable deal. And it's gonna take both perspectives to make that happen. Now, when it comes to application in the area of hiring and assignments, it's a little different. I worked at a company where the chairman himself had what I call last deal syndrome. Every six to eight weeks, the organization got whipsawed. And as a result, the organization crashed because they chased deals and not the market. It was classic square peg, round hole problem. So as a leader, you want to profile your team leads and understand operator or trader. And then when you're managing projects, you're going to find natural transition points as things move through the organization. So in a biz dev deal, for example, send a trader out to do the deal and have an explicit handoff plan to an operator to make the deal work after it's done. Some career advice. We've all heard stories about bankers who ended up working in nonprofits, and I've met tons of engineers who ended up in sales. In both cases, people discovered they were in the wrong role and had the courage to act on it. Early in your career, get experience in both sides, and then focus on the one that brings you joy. 
If you're interested longer term in general management, you're actually going to need plenty of experience in both roles. So in that case, you're going to have to continually stretch yourself by moving back and forth between trading and operating roles. And finally, pick your boss well. If your boss isn't the right fit for the role, you're on a mission to nowhere. So to summarize, understanding the distinction between operators and traders is important to being an effective manager. People who enjoy their work contribute more, stay longer, and are just happier as people. It's your job as a leader to get the square peg in the square hole. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribe. And if you've got a question, ask it down below and I'll address it in a future video.